to talk about text game and social calibration and how to socially calibrate yourself when you're texting or messaging a girl on social media or dating apps. I'm Paul, Apex Mindset. Take your finger, slide it over, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and um, share with your friends, like, and let's get into it. So I thought I would help some of you guys out and provide some examples and we could talk about what's good, what's not. So one of the biggest things I run into, one of the biggest problems is just the lack of social calibration. Guys who are high value guys, high SMV guys, a lot of times, um, they, you know, they present well, are just a little bit out of sync when it comes to socially calibrating themselves over their messages and conveying attraction and arousal and stimulating arousal and desire in a girl and, and also demonstrating their, their actual SMV, right? The girls have so many options out there. A hot girl has tons of people in her inbox and how do you stand out from all those guys? It's hard for her to decipher who's the high SMV guy, who's the good match uh, or not. She just doesn't know. And so she has to base it off of that text exchange. And if you're not calibrated with your text exchange, this is going to hinder you greatly. Obviously your profile, whether you're, whether you're sourcing these women from like social media and that's how you're initially contacting them or your dating app, your profile has to be maximized. Your profile has to demonstrate high sexual market value or it's not going to work. But once you get past that swipe or that match or that first message, now you're in a conversation. How that conversation goes is going to make the difference between getting on a date with her or getting her out with you or to come over and not. So I want to go through some a couple of different examples. This is actually a example from the same person he had saved a message exchanged and it was, it's, it's you wouldn't believe even that this is the same person because it just he was so his, his social calibration was so bad and the exchange was so bad with this one that he gave me an example of that, that you wouldn't believe it's th that the second exchange i'm going to share with you is actually the same person but the second second exchange was after doing some coaching with me and we had gone over some messages. I'd given him a better idea of what to, to send over. And it's not just the technique of what to send either. It's, it's really recognizing where she's at, her mental framework, and being able to gauge where her emotions are, where her thoughts are. It actually requires empathy, believe it or not. So one mistake I see guys who get involved in pickup is they focus on the technique and they're too technique oriented. Usually that's because of the lack of maybe self-esteem or self-confidence in themselves. And they're worried that they're going to do the wrong thing. So they're focusing on themselves and then they focus on the technique and then they are ignoring the girl that's in front of them. They do it when they're in front of girls, right? When they're actually talking to them live and they do it over the messaging, you know, over, over a messaging app. They're just not picking up on their, so the social cues, the words, and what those words mean and the meaning that she's trying to convey, her moods, her thoughts, feelings, emotions, all that stuff. They're just not picking up on it. And you can pick up on these things when even from the initial message and how she's messaging you, the, the timestamp between messages, things like that, right? You can figure, you can, you can calibrate yourself socially based on how she is, how she's feeling. If you don't know what she's thinking, feeling, going through, you're not making an actual connection there, a social connection. You're just sort of LARPing techniques. And that's a mistake, actually. That's the biggest mistake. That's the hardest thing to learn and the biggest mistake that guys make. So like give you an example, you could say something like, oh, it sounds like you need a spanking, right? If you say that the wrong time, <laughs> your initial message or just it's not calibrated with the conversation, you're going to look like a creep. It'll look like a weirdo, right? And she's not going to go out with you. But if you said that like at the right time, 
depending on how the conversation's going, if it's calibrated appropriately, you're going to get a positive response. And maybe there's a sexual undertone there and you'll help develop at least some arousal there through text. So same words, same verbiage used in the wrong context or the right context makes all the difference. And that's why social calibration is, is key here. And yes, you can calibrate based on messages and text. And I'll demonstrate that here. Um, I'll, I'll refer you to my video though on, on social calibration where I had the seduction matrix. It even does apply in text. It sort of demonstrates the push-pull idea, okay, the balance between comfort and tension, but also the balance between uh, whether she's sexually open or closed or not. You can tell based on how a messages are going, whether she is opening up sexually or whether she's closed sexually, and then that can help determine how you're going to tell your messages. For example, if she's closed sexually and you make a you know, flirty sexual comment, it's not going to go well. Right. Okay. So here is what not to do. Here's how you sound creepy. <laughs> All right. So this guy starts off with so cute and submissive in a heart. All right. So that's his opener. I don't open with compliments. Okay. I don't open with compliments a person. I don't open with compliments um, via, via text, especially in social media, especially not like this. Um, it, it just, it only works if she sees your SMV as extremely high. And that's a, it's it, so for example, day gamers that start with an opener and a compliment, they do it with a lot of confidence, extreme amount of confidence and their SMV is high. They look good. And so girls can respond positively to that sometimes, but it's a crapshoot whether that's going to work for you, especially via text. It's just not a good opener. It sets you up for failure because you're qualifying to her right away. And she gets tons of you're hot, you're cute, oh, whatever, picks all the time or messages all the time. I mean, that's like her inbox is filled with that. And so you're really kind of making yourself not stand out with that sort of an opener. So not good already. <laughs> and she responds with no. <laughs> okay. Now that's another thing. So submissive is, a, is an interesting word because women don't like to be called submissive. They'll take that as an insult a lot of times in the wrong context. Remember, we're in the world of strong, independent womanhood, okay? Now that strong, independent woman, if you're an alpha male and she's with you, she's going to fall into your frame and all that crap will fall away. You don't have to worry about it. She'll be submissive to you, okay? If you have the right game in person, but she doesn't know you and it, it, there's a good chance that, oh, you're the submissive woman or whatever being called that. It, it's making her feel like she sounds weak, right? That's how a woman's going to interpret that a lot of times, not all the times, but a lot of times. And so it's just, it's a, it's a word that you want to be carefully using unless it's in the right context of the conversation. But obviously as an opener, that's a, that's a danger right there that you're just going to get blown out. So he gets, she, she responds with no, so it's not going well. Ha ha, what do you mean? So now he's qualifying to her some more. I right, know, what do you mean no? <laughs> right? She replies, well, what makes you think I'm submissive? So now she's challenging him. And see what, that's what I was saying with the submissive thing. Or see what he was trying to do, but it's giving a bad feeling, bad impression because of her framework of those words. All right. Words have different connotations to people. You got to got to learn how to play with that. So then he replies, you just have that innocent look is all I can tell a lot by a girl just by looking at her. Do you want to know what I can tell about you? <laughs> all right. I don't know. It, it's that predictive, you know, oh, I can tell a lot about a girl just by looking at her. It, it's it's a bit douchey, right? And and it's not, the way it started wasn't good. And so now that's kind of, he's like justifying himself in this. So she just is okay, sure. <laughs> she has no investment here, man. Like she's giving one, one word answers and responses and she's really just playing with them at this point. But he thinks he's going somewhere. So you are smart, shy, but a little bit of an ego and frustration. I'm guessing from too many subpar guys trying to get with you. All right. So he's trying to separate himself from the pack by saying, Hey, look at me. I'm different. All right. 
Um, but since the opener already started off so poorly and everything has been not been going well, the way he's executing this isn't good. It, it, it actually, you, you are not different guy. You, you sound exactly like every other guy. Right. And so let's see. So she, he goes, am I right? <laughs> so again, more qualifications, right. At qualifying to her. Am I right? Ego question, she replies, ego question mark, frustration, maybe. And how do you know that you aren't, how do you know you aren't one of those subpar guys? Exactly. He's coming across like everybody else. And he's trying to say, oh, look at me, I'm different. How many beta males and douchebags say, oh, look at me, I'm different, right? Like all the time. Okay, that happens all the time. Everybody's different, you know, and really, really they're all doing the same crap. So she sees right through this. This is just not going well for him. Um, and this is very, it's like very cringy. Any woman who reads this is going to laugh because she's done, she's, she's been down this road before and it's cringe worthy. Right. So he replies with, because I have a lot of girls interested in me, like, okay. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and I turn them down. So again, he's, he's trying hard to demonstrate value but he's not demonstrative, demonstrating value in a socially calibrated good way. And you, you, you turn guys down too, because you need a man to dominate you. All right. So he's clearly, he's trying to follow a script of some sort to, to lead this into a sexual conversation. And he's not, as you can tell with the way this conversation is going, he is not really, making a connection with her he's not seeing what she's seeing now where you're watching this video i'm watching it right from from a bird's eye view we can see that she is playing with this dude and she is not interested and she's really just taking up the attention and playing with them right and women love attention so they'll play with guys online like this it doesn't mean they're going to go out with them and she's not turned on by it. like she's not engaged in a positive way like we can see that right she's not gravitating towards him in a way that would we would want and so and in fact so she's challenging him here of course he tries to dhv harder so he's looking like a try hard now which is never good and she replies okay after the dom <laughs> you need a man to dominate you she goes um you don't look like you could dominate me. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> All right. So yeah, she's not, um, not impressed. Okay. So his reply, you need a spanking. <laughs> All right. It, it's like, it, there's, it's like, there's two different conversations going on. You know what I mean? He's trying to move her, but his push pull is off. His calibration is off. She's trying to move it into a sexual direction when she's demonstrating she's sexually closed. He's trying to build tension when she's already, there's not enough comfort here. Like she doesn't have any rapport built up with this person. You know, there's no connection or fantasy. She's not imagining being with this guy in a positive manner. So there's not enough comfort for him to build the tension. So the tension, so again, when you have tension, you're trying to build tension and she's sexually closed, right? And there's not enough comfort. You are in that part of that quadrant that I mentioned where you're, you're creepy now. All right. Tension with no comfort and sexual closed is creepy. Tension with just enough comfort. So her anxiety isn't through the roof and she's sexually open is maximum sexual desire. We have that joke, right? Where what's the difference between sexual harassment, not sexual harassment, whether the guy's hot or not, there's some truth to that, right? The difference between the creepy guy and the hot guy that she has a crazy desire for is whether she's sexually closed or open or not to that guy. And you can't open a girl if she's tense and closed. Your, your sexual comments will come across as creepy to her. You have to give her some comfort. So she starts to like you as a person and feel this rapport. And then she will start to open up and the potentiality to open her up sexually can be there. Then when she's open sexually, then you can build tension again, right? So I'm gonna to refer to that video. I'll link it in the description for you guys to check that one out, but it does apply to text games. So he responds, you need a spanking. She's like, okay. <laughs> and he's like, I think we should meet. 
And um, no meeting happened. That was it. That was the, she ghosted the rest of the communication. That didn't go well. It, I see, you can see what he was trying to do there, but it, it went over so badly because of his lack of social calibration. Now this guy, he piqued her interest, I'm sure, because his profiles were halfway decent when he came to me. He's a decent looking guy. He, he looks like he's a high, like a high earner. And so it, this is just a lack of social calibration. I, it's, it, it didn't match who he presented on his profile, actually, because, I mean, he looked, he looked like a guy who would be calibrating a stud. And just his, his abilities to communicate w- weren't, weren't very good. It was like he was trying to game too much. So you, I see that all the time, too. Guys, are they get some pickup skills, and they try, they try to be too gamey, right, to pick up E and they're, and they're not making a connection with the girl. All right. So same guy after some coaching. So his opener, nice scenery. Where was that? Where was the beach pick taken? Great opener, right? Because he's not overly complimentary, complimentary to her. He's not complimentary to look. So oh, you're so beautiful. And any of that stuff He's not qualifying to her. Okay. And he's not coming across as creepy or gross. He's just opening her up with something that is relevant to her and is, you know, it's, it's building, it's a genuine curiosity. His, his attitude and your attitude should be as curious with a new girl. You're curious, you're interested or, but you're more curious about whether or not she would be a good match for you, whether or not you want to go on a date with her, whether or not it would work. You have curiosity, you're curious about her, just learning about her. That curiosity is negates any anxiety you might have, any approach anxiety or any social awkwardness. I mean, not say any, cause you have to calibrate yourself socially. That's a skill set. but guys who get like a little bit of anxiety or they're nervous talking to a hot girl, even through text, um, you can't be curious and looking towards her to figure her out and learn about her and focused inward and anxious about when worried about whether or not you're doing the right thing at the same time, those two things don't match. So if you're feeling that like most guys will get that anxiety, or if it's not even an anxiety, it's this inward focus. Oh, what should I say next? Am I saying the right thing? Questioning what they're doing. If you take all that those feelings and thoughts and then project it outward to her with genuine curiosity, you'll do a lot better, right? You're going to make an actual connection with her and that will give her enough of that comfort and maybe sexually open her where you can build sexual attention then through fantasy. And then of course, by the time you guys get out on that date or hook up or she comes over, things go really well. So he starts off nice scenery. Where was the beach pic taken? Thank you. You know, Sarasota. Okay. Florida question mark. I just went last month. Exclamation point. You're making me want to go back. I know I miss it already. Okay. So you're making me want to go back. You're talking about travel vacation, talking about wanting to go back and you're actually traveling a little bit in memory. You're not in the present moment and you're building a little bit of fantasy. That's a good thing though. All right. Talking about travel is good. Talking about experiences is good because it puts them in the mental state of fantasy. When I say fantasy, I mean visualization, imagery, building like uh, ideas and positive outcomes and stuff like that. In person, you actually can build a human connection because you're in front of the person, but over text, you, it's, you can't really build that human connection in the same way. We're not even genetically wired for that. Okay. We're not genetically wired to build connection over screens. So what you're actually doing is presenting the idea or image of you, and she is receiving that idea or image and responding to that and actually, whether she knows or not, conveying an idea or image of herself. So you're dealing, it's a little, this is a little cerebral here, but you're dealing with subjective imagery, not real people over a screen, right? Because you're not in, in person. You can't touch each other. You can't see the, the tonality. You can't see the body language visually. So what you're building is a fraction of yourself. You're building a connection between a fraction of yourself and a fraction of herself. All right. So what fills in the blanks is imagery or imagination. She has to use her imagination to figure out what the rest of you is like based, you know, you're just looking at words on the screen. So she has to use her imagination to see what the rest of you is like and vice versa. You know, she could be a total train wreck, 
she could be a fatty and, and catfished her photos. All right. There's so many things you don't know. So what you're actually not, you're actually not dealing with reality. You're dealing with your uh, uh, imagination or fantasy. And so when you can crawl into that conversation and build fantasy, then she has a fantasy of what it would be like to be with you in whatever context. And that's what causes that investment to, to go upward. Okay. She thinks she's getting to know you. She's actually getting to know the fantasy of you. And that fantasy is positive. All right. And that's what causes it. So talking about vacations, travel experiences, these are good. All right. And he jumps right into that. And he had an opener for it because she had obviously some picture somewhere of a beach. So the next one. Okay. So I miss it already. She says, so he goes, it's settled then since we're dating now, pack your shit. We're leaving tomorrow to uh, tomorrow afternoon flight to Tampa. Make sure you pack something sexy for a nice dinner later that evening. All right. Little forward. <laughs> okay. But he's kidding, right? He's not being serious. Obviously they just met. He said, Oh, we're dating now. That that's an opener that guys use. I've heard that a lot where guys will say, Oh, I guess we're dating now. Some guys will open just with that. Oh, I guess we're dating now. <laughs> right. Cause they swiped on each other or something. Um, that's, that can, that's okay. It's not bad. It's, it's building a fantasy, right? Cause you're not really dating. It's a joke. It's humorous, but it's also stepping into that imagination realm, stepping into that fantasy realm, right? So done correctly, that can be pretty good. And so it's a little long. It's a little bit, you know, but, but it's not bad. I actually don't think this is bad. Okay. Um, you know, he could have went in a different direction with it and kept the conversation going, built more comfort, um, I, I mean, any, if I'm going to try to pick this apart, I might say, yeah, we probably maybe should have done that. But that's okay. Right. I mean, cause you got to remember he's talking to several women, right. And he's vetting them out too. So now that he has, he, you know, he had a good profile, he had good openers. So he's getting better responses from women now. So if he shoots a shot like this and it doesn't work or, you know, temporarily pauses or something like that. It's not like he's dateless and this is those one chance. All right. That should never be the circumstance you're in, especially with online dating. You don't know these girls. You'll only know the image of them. And so you can't get that invested. Right. And so he, you know, he shot a shot here. That's fine. She laughs. Okay. And, um, and that was it. She didn't respond after that. So he let that go for like four days. You won't be able to see on timestamps here because of the way the the, the things cropped, but he, um, he let that go for like four or five days. It was like prior to the weekend. And then it was like after the weekend, he re-engaged her. So some guys are like, have these hard rules that are a little bit ridiculous in my opinion. And they don't fit with the way communication goes nowadays in 2021 where they're like, well, if she doesn't respond to me or if she just, you know, blows me off, I'm just going to, I'm going to move on or whatever, like maybe, but dude, she doesn't know you. Right. Like, it's like, cause all right. So here's the mistake guys will be like, well, she doesn't have genuine burning desire for me because she just laughed at my comment, didn't comment anything else. And she was only like given one word answers. She wasn't that invested. So screw her. I'll go on to the next one. Yeah. Maybe if she's not that hot and you're not that interested, fine. That's, that's a fine answer. But here's the thing. Guys, personalize this too much. She doesn't have the ability to have genuine desire for you because she doesn't know you, right? She only knows a little sliver of you from the internet. And she that, that little sliver is going to be clouded by her perceptions, which are in her where? Imagination. So you haven't had a chance to build up that imagination yet or that fantasy with her. And she's never had a chance to meet you to see what you're really like. So genuine burning desire is not a pro it's not a, it's not what you're dealing with here yet because she can't necessarily have, I mean, can't expect her to have that. Sometimes it happens right away where she sees your stuff and just, you know, falls all over you. But even the highest SMV guys don't, don't get that from women right away from dating apps or social media, because there's just no connection there. All right. So you can't get too caught up in that. So she just laughed. And so he let it go for a few days. Okay. She didn't respond to anything. And he was talking to the girls. So it wasn't a thought. He engages her after the weekend. That was an amazing trip. So he reopens her kind of joking about, about the trip, right? Obviously they didn't ever went on a trip. And so she goes, LOL, I feel refreshed. All right. So see what he did there through what my advice would be is he's building a fantasy, right? Oh, that was an amazing trip. We just took, Oh, I feel refreshed. So she's, it's joking. It's fun. It's banter, but she's now in her imagination. Okay. 
her imagination is in, in fantasy. That's where desire can be built over text. All right. It's not going to be built from how is your work day? Just those regular comfort building questions aren't building desire. It builds comfort. You know, how was your work day? Is a fine opener, you know, and, and build some comfort. Oh, mine was fine. How was yours? Whatever. Cause you have to build comfort. Right. But it's not building desire, building fantasy. So this is where that push pull is. This is where that social calibration comes in. You have to oscillate between the two, but anyways, he opens amazing trip. I feel refreshed. So she's in that fantasy mode a little bit with him. This is going to open her up. She's going to feel a little bit more interested and curious about him as you'll probably see as this continues, he goes, LOL, but seriously, how is the weekend? Do anything special. So he oscillates. He's not going to, another mistake guys get is they start to get some good results in a direction and they stick with that. For example, Hey, nice puppy dog. What's, what's her name? Oh, her name is Kita. Blah, blah, blah. Do you like dogs? Yeah. I like dogs. Do you like dogs? I like dogs. Yeah. Dogs are great. How many dogs have you had? I've had a few. How about you? Dogs, dogs, dogs for like several texts. And it's like, okay, see you later. All right. Comfort started with dogs. All right. Going in a good direction, but there's never a pivot. So you have to learn how to pivot in these conversations. And sometimes you'll pivot right in the same message that you're giving. Okay. So he's built a little bit of fantasy. All right. Oh, Hey, amazing trip. I feel refreshed in a joking you know, a little manner there, but then he pivots to a little more of a serious, you know, question, not super serious, but a comfort question, because if he's all jokes and fantasy all the time, he doesn't seem it's, it's, it's not, he doesn't seem like a real person and it, and it starts to be unattractive because there's not enough rapport built through that comfort. Right. So yeah. So, well, I, I, but seriously, how was the weekend? Do anything special? So he's asking her how her actual weekend was. She's not really, uh, but it wasn't bad. Work Saturday. You? Okay. So now if you notice the difference between her previous responses and this one is now she is building a little bit of an investment. She's giving him a longer, more real answer and asking a question back. Okay. In the beginning, there wasn't any of that, right? It was just a connection. And, but see what he had done was in the beginning to, to, to overanalyze, we're not overanalyzing, we're analyzing it for your benefit. So you see, he did a good opener. He built, you know, he had a good exchange, built some fantasy. It was funny and cool, whatever. And it left her with positive emotion, but she didn't, she wasn't invested. She just had positive emotion from the, the talk. Okay. But there was during, in the time that the talk was happening, she was humor. She was laughing. She, you know, it was a positive feeling that she was conveying through the message. But then he didn't overinvest. See if had he have overinvested, tried to continue texting her, it might have gone okay had he continued. Had he have hit her up the next day or the next day or been you know hitting her up all weekend or whatever, it might not have gone well. Because he took a break after her laughing, he had other women. So he went with other women, then re-engaged her later. That demonstrated abundance. So her hypergamous brain saw him as okay he's now a good option. She may have been, let's say, minimally attracted to him in the beginning, like a five or something, just enough to, to, to connect however they connect it. But she wasn't all that interested. But when he didn't show neediness and went on to other things and then just kind of circled back after a weekend, which demonstrates high value. I got things going on this weekend. I'm, you know, I'm not going to waste my time bantering with this girl over a text, right? Or, on, or, or online or on some app or whatever. And so when he did that, the demonstrated high value. So she had good feelings plus a demonstration of high value. Then he gets into her head, builds a little fantasy here just with two lines. Now she's interested a little bit. She's a little bit more invested, okay? Because then we went to the comfort question. She's wondering, she's having good feelings about this guy. He's demonstrated high value. His SMV looks good on his pics and his profile. So now she's start, sort of starting to wonder, is this guy a real person, right? And so that's, that's where that's going. So she asks him a question that's demonstrating um, investment. When she asks you questions and gives you more real answers, that's a demonstration of investment. So he responds, I always got a lot going on. Had people over, brunch Sunday, worked a little too. What do you do work-wise? Okay. DHV is all over here. All right. Had a lot going on. Demonstration of high value. Had people over. Okay. Social. Demonstration of high value. 
brunch, doing something that's cool, whatever, not just sitting in your house, staring at the ceiling, worked a little. So he's, he's a worker, right? He, he makes money. He does things for work, all DHVs. Okay. Then fires a question back. What do you do work-wise? I just bartend. How about you? So now time to pivot. Okay. Only fans, obviously joke. And then a meme. <laughs> all right. So he's, you know, he's obviously kidding. He's joking. So conversation was a little bit too into comfort started to get dull not too much it wasn't really dull yet but he knew just when to pivot and so that conversation so pivoting is a skill set you guys need to learn so he pivots sends a stupid meme over equal pay for men on only fans okay so joke now here's the thing too man if she was like this feminist crazy or something she might respond negatively to this meme so that's a good way of screening her right like, if you don't want to go out with feminist crazies, you know, send a meme like that. It was an opportunity. Had she responded negatively to that and been like, oh, yeah, well, women work harder or whatever. You know, if, if she had been all about women, women, uh, feminism, right, and been a crazy after that and been triggered by that meme or been unpleasant, he knows the ghost her next her, right? So you want to screen women, too, when you go through this process, not just try to get hook up with anything. So she, LOL, sounds busy. So she's, you know, she's got a sense of humor. That's good. Also a professional dom. So now we're opening it up a little bit sexually, but it's in a joking context. So it's light. You know what I mean? It's not like I'm a dom, you know, to some stranger, you know. Had he opened with this or had he had been in a comfort question, like how was your weekend? Good. How was yours? Really busy. I'm a professional dom. That wouldn't have gone well. You see the same the words there. I also, or I'm a, a professional dom, all right? A BDSM do, uh, dominant. It, it put in the wrong context would be really creepy. Put here, it's not. It's funny. It builds a little tension, but it's funny, right? And and he had just, you know, and he had just had that, you know, that little joking, uh, non-serious pivot. So she replies with me too. <laughs> All right. It's like, she's, a, so she's playing along. Okay. So she's, she's having fun. Right. And that's good. You're developing good feelings. She's having a good time. He goes, cool. We can beat the shit out of each other when we have sex. Then sounds like fun. Maybe. All right. So see how he seamlessly pivoted into a sexual conversation, but it's still light, fun and funny and see how he's demonstrating alpha behavior by just not giving a crap. Right. He doesn't care. He's not super censored and worried about offending her or upsetting her, right? He's talking about, you know, hey, we can beat the crap out of each other when we have sex. I mean, that's that's funny, right? And he's he's making it, it light, but he's also making a sexual connotation. He's opening up her imagination and her fantasy towards imprinting little little phrases, words, keywords of dominant sex. Okay. And women like dominant sex. So she replies, LOL, I think I'll lose that fight though. You look stronger than me. Okay, so she is actually showing some submissiveness to him there, right? Instead of challenging him and, and shit testing him, she's actually demonstrating that some that's, that's a choosing signal there, all right? That's an IOI. Um, very subtle, but it's there. So you, so you see what I mean? You got to, some of the stuff over text, you got to like, there's skill in picking up on the subtleties of it because you're not in front of the person. So it's much more difficult as far as, communications concern. This is a skill set to, to learn. So he, he replies, it's okay. You'll enjoy it. I promise. So they're in the fantasy, right? In the future, in the fantasy of now a sexual situation, LOL. Oh, we'll see. See, so a little bit of a shit test, a little bit of pullback, but I mean, she is in the fantasy thinking about a sexual situation with this guy. And that sort of happens seamlessly with this little text exchange, right? So moving on, then she, all right. So she, <laughs> she gets a little, she, she gets a little nervous. She, we'll see some time had passed between her first text and this one. I don't remember how much, but it was a few hours. And so, so he was doing whatever. Cause again, you're not just texting her boom, boom, boom all the time. Right. So it'd been like a couple hours. She replies and please tell me you're not some weirdo guy though. And you were kidding about the professional Tom. Okay. She likes this guy now, right? She's starting to invest in him. So when he didn't reply after that last message, because he, I'm sure he was just doing stuff, not that he was going to ghost her or whatever, but it'd been a couple hours that during that time, her, her wheels are turning. Okay. That hamster is now moving in the direction 
uh, that he wants it to go. Okay. So he's now thinking, or she's now thinking like wondering about this dude, like getting very curious about him. And she had some sexual arousal feelings during that text conversation, clearly. Right. Because he, he seamlessly brought up that imagery in the right context in a socially calibrated way. But now the, she needs a little bit of comfort, right? The, it's not just an anti-slut defense thing, but it's like, ah, oh man, like we just, I, this guy seems to like, this guy seems cool. I don't, I hope he's not a weirdo. And so she needs that comfort. All right. She's, which, which demonstrates attraction. So she's thinking of that guy like this and a little bit worried or concerned. That means she's tense, right? But tense and sexually open. And so the tension's almost too much where she's going to freak like, oh no, like danger signals. So her desire for comfort causes her to say that. He's, he replies, nah, just playing with you. All right. So he didn't keep going with it, right? He, he just, he, he knew that he needed to deliver comfort here. So he went, nah, just playing with you. Joking aside, I'm dominant during sex and my partners have loved it, but no, I'm not some fetish site. I'm not on some fetish site or anything. And then he, then he lightens it up with, LOL, you would have found me earlier if that were the case, like as if she's on the sites. So that was a very calibrated comment because he, he can tell that she was getting, hmm, I don't know about this guy, right? And so his response, okay, was more genuine, more sincere about it, right? And, and, he, and he brought her the comfort she needed. And then he lightened it up again, okay? So it's not so serious. Remember, as men, we're taking any serious concerns or problems, even in relationships, and we're making them smaller, more manageable, okay, with our frame and how we frame things. So she goes right and a little laugh face, and then she sends over this picture, okay? So she feels, all right, relieved. He, he didn't respond like a weirdo. You see how, how, how delicate this can be sometimes, right? Because had he responded with more jokes or bull stuff about being a dom or whatever, or just continued being overtly sexual, that wouldn't have been sexually calibrated. And she may have gotten, she probably would have ghosted him or just kind of gotten a little bit of discomfort there because she was at that thought point where she's like, man, I don't know if this guy's a weirdo. And so all he had to do was know based on being socially calibrated, which is recognizing what she's thinking, feeling, where her perceptions are. Okay. That takes empathy, having that real communication with her, understanding where she's coming from. He knew what to say, all right? It wasn't a game. It wasn't a tactic. It wasn't a technique. It wasn't a line. He didn't go through his list of lines that he got from his latest pickup course. He just knew how to be calibrated with her socially, right? Which is a skill set to learn. It's a skill set guys learn in consultations with me because they're just not good at it. Guys who are high SMV and smart engineer types a lot of times, right? Who are very analytical and great matches have, sometimes they have trouble calibrating, but they're also good at figuring out formulas. So if they're able to bag their egos, which usually if they're scheduling something with me, they've already bagged their egos. This is a trainable, learnable skill. All right. Just like anything else. And so it just requires guys, some of these guys like this particular client here who shared this, he just had to bag, you know, he bagged his ego and, and hit me up because he was struggling. He, he wasn't getting the results he was, she should have been getting because he was a high, higher SMD guy. So anyway, <laughs> she responds with right. She's relieved, okay, that he's not a weirdo. And so she's now back into joking mode. And she wants doesn't want to seem like a weirdo herself. Remember, women are very self-conscious, especially when they become invested maybe in a guy. So she's starting to get a little bit invested in this guy. Not a ton of investment. She's not going to cry over his absence if he or if he if he ghosts her. But she's starting to kind of get invested, like thinking seriously about meeting up with this dude, and getting sexually attracted to him as well. So she doesn't want to seem like a somebody who wouldn't be fun to hang out with. So she sends over this meme or picture, whatever. It looks like Family Guy, and she's in a dominatrix outfit, and he's chained up. <clears throat> so he laughs, ha ha ha. You know, maybe a little bit of a sh of a shit test too, because. She's the dom in this one, right? So anyway, he, he responds. So he responds, ha, ha, ha. Leave the baby at home. Wear the outfit, though. <laughs> All right. Smooth, right? Pretty good. They're in a light mood. 
but he's he's he, now there's some sexual banter and now there's some sexual play okay she goes um yes sir with a laugh face so she's keeping a light too but dude she's getting into it that's the fantasy i'm talking about right that's that fantasy i'm trying to tell you guys so like she's now in this little fantasy of him being a dom her being in a bdsm situation with him her being in a sexual situation with him but she's of course keeping it light and all that because that is the comfort that she needs um to continue you know to continue to feel safe there all right but she's now sexually open to him as well so he says good girl wink face for real though jokes and bullshit aside come over tonight oh <laughs> so he was right for that clothes man like that was a pretty bold move um i can't say i disagree though to be honest because he could have pivoted if she was like oh i can't tonight i'm busy hey no worries when are you free this week he could have pivoted right over to the normal script for getting a girl to go out with you. But he saw that she was warm enough. And I tend to agree with this given the communication that she was giving him. See, this guy was not socially calibrated before, but he is able, when he was able to shift his focus from technique and thinking about himself to thinking about the girl and curiosity and building fantasy he was able to recognize stuff and see things he could never see before with these girls. Right. And so he responds with, you know, yeah, good girl for real. Anyway. Yeah. Come over tonight. So he goes immediately for the clothes. It, it, it could arguably be a little premature again, but I, I don't think so because had she said no, she wasn't going to say no and be a crazy person about it. Most likely she would have most likely just given an excuse, which would have been fine. He could have pivoted right into, hey, no worries. Let, when are you free this week? I just ha I had no worries. I had some time tonight. So I thought I'd ask, when are you free this week? Easy pivot, right? All right. She goes, like meet somewhere or go to your place? Question mark. Tension. Okay. She's like, oh crap. We're joking about sex. She's having fun, bantering about sex, getting the attention. You know, she's getting a little wet in areas, right? Little tingles, right? Ooh, BDSM. And then he's like, yeah, uh, come over. <laughs> and she's like, ah, ah. too much tension. Okay, sexual arousal was there. Tension goes boom, all way over to the tension side. So she's like, like me somewhere, go to your place. All right. But he has her, dude. He's got her. Doesn't matter, right? So she's tense and she's like, oh, I don't know. Should I do it? It's a good tension though, right? Tension is good. You just have to balance it with comfort the right way, which he does here. He goes, my place, period. Look, I never do this either without meeting a girl first, but I got a good feeling about you. We can have a few drinks and have a chill time getting to know each other without having to worry about masks and curfew bullshit. So obviously there was some COVID restrictions. You could still still go out, um, I think, where, where he was at, but there was some restrictions there. So he just said, hey, we can just chill. So notice how there's a bit of a pivot here. We can have a few drinks and just and have a chill, a chill time getting to know each other. So he steps out of the sexual fantasy realm into reality realm, which is, hey, we're just going to have a chill time. See where this goes. So why? And then he then he double texts, which is fine here. It's a little long. You know, someone might think or arguably a debatable critique would be like, he's kind of backing up out of this a little bit, or maybe, or he's providing a little bit too com much comfort. I, I could see that as a critique. It, it does work out at the end here, but you know, I can't say I, again, see the reason why this is more of an art than a science is because you're calibrating it off of the girl. Right. And so he made a judgment call here. He said, so why don't we do this? And it was immediately like a double text. Now double texts are okay in the right context right not double text to look needy but done the right way it's fine so he goes well, so what what so why don't we do this let's chat on the phone or video chat real quick shoot the shit and set up details for tonight okay so uh, yeah okay i don't remember so yeah that was actually good <laughs> okay that was good it's a little long but he gave her the comfort she needed he didn't ask for permission right he led he didn't leave it with look, I never do this and all that. And let's leave it there and then wait for her response. He could have, but he closed it with, so why don't we do this? Let's chat on the phone and set up details for tonight. Okay. So, 
so that was his and 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 what they ended up doing was they ended up chatting okay i think it was just an audio call and they chatted for a little bit it went well and then they set it up and she came over and i'm pretty sure he got laid that uh, no yes he did get laid that night from her and and they it was a continued situation like they saw each other more than just the one night too so success right and so when he pivoted um into that last statement and gave that comfort more, you know, gave the comfort she needed because he could tell right from that line because he was calibrated. Okay. So he could, he was climbing into, he had the empathy, right? He was focused on her and what she was thinking, feeling, and, and able to interpret what that statement meant. Right. And he could have stayed hard line with it. And maybe she would have said yes. Maybe she would have said no. Okay. But it wouldn't have necessarily sealed it. He could tell, okay, like coming over a dude's house, you don't know. She didn't present herself like a total, we could say slut or whatever, right? Where she's just looking to get banged in. Some, cause some girls, we have those examples. I'm sure you guys have all seen it. Like some girls will escalate like real quickly. You know, they're, they're coming over. They're just, they're on Tinder to get banged. They find a guy that looks hot on, you know, his photos. They have some banter. They get in a sex talk right away and then they meet up. And that's cool too. But a lot of times that's not like that. Most girls, um, that are going to be a good long-term plate. I say long-term plate, like not just that night, but you know, you want a girl to be on rotation and come over f- frequently and actually develop something with her. They're probably not going to be the girl who's like, yeah, let's bang tonight. Right. She's probably going to be more like this girl where she had the attraction. She had the arousal, but she was trying to make sure it was safe. You know what I mean? Trying to make sure it was cool. Trying to make sure the guy was going to be a good match. She's trying to vet him. Okay. But she could tell that tension was there. He mitigated it through, hey, I don't do this. So the I don't do this thing, that, that's what women say, right? And that's okay. Like that you can give it right back to them. When women say, oh, I never do this. And then they drop to their knees, right? <laughs> you know that they've done that several times, all right? <laughs> in, in, in probably worse context than the situation she's in with you. So we know it's BS. It's the good chimp thing, right? Well, you give it right back to them. I, I never do this. <laughs> like, they know you've done this before, right? It's a game. They know, they know, <laughs> right? We talk, when you come up to a girl and you say, um, I just noticed you over there. You look like someone I know. And you're trying to pick up on her. She knows, she knows you don't look like someone she knows, right? I mean, this is all, it's, it's you're climbing into the fantasy. You're climbing into the imagination, the game, and they love the game. The game is where arousal develops, okay? So all I did was pull the, yeah, I never do this, but I, I, you seem different, <laughs> all right? The you seem different thing. They, and that, and she, prob- she probably does seem different. You know, he's probably had several conversations with other girls that didn't go, that, that the girls ghosted him, didn't bite, they, or they just wasn't a good exchange, right? So she is a little different, right? So you seem different. Let's just have a chill time, kind of see where it goes. So from out of the fantasy of I'm going to be your dominant and you're going to be my sex slave, right? Out of that little fantasy, back to reality to build the comfort. Hey, you're safe here. We're not, I'm not going to, you're not going to show up and I'm going to be standing there with a zipper mask. Okay. We're going to hang out, maybe have a snack and a couple drinks in my place where we don't have to deal with the COVID restrictions and see where things go. Right. And then he offered, Hey, why don't we do this? Let's video chatter, talk real quick, set up logistics. Perfect. I recommend doing that because especially in this type of a scenario, because girls will be in, especially with the pandemic situations we've been in, we've, we've really, I, I mean, I knew this as a technique prior, but really got solidified during this COVID thing where girls couldn't meet up. I mean, I guess in their situation, they could meet up at a place, but girls couldn't meet up dudes at an actual place, but they still want to date. They still want to bang. They still want to have fun. And so they're just sitting in the house, right? So in order for them to date, they're going to come over your house if you know how to close it, right? But they might, some of them, especially, you know, depending on their circumstance, might have, and especially depending on their attraction level to you, the, if they're really attracted to you, believe it or not, depending on the girl, she might actually be nervous coming over your place because her attraction is so high. She knows she's just going to bang you if she comes over, right? Right. And she might put herself in a circumstance that isn't good for her. Maybe has sex with you. You don't call her back, right? Maybe has sex with you and she really likes it, really likes you. And then you treat her like dirt, 
because you're that guy, right? There's protective nature women have. In fact, healthy women have that protective thing. You guys need to recognize that. It's not a lack of genuine burning desire a lot of times. A lot of times girls are nervous to come over because they're, they're really attracted to you and they're nervous. They got a lot of tension and they need that comfort. And so having that talk or that call will give them that. Let's know you're not a serial killer. You're a real person, right? They get to have that that closer communication exchange with you. And then it gives her that comfort enough to, to agree to go to your house for the first date, knowing when she knew when she was going over there, she was going to have sex with them guaranteed. And that's why so much tension there. And that's why she wanted to mitigate all those things as much as possible. So she could be relaxed and have a good time. Right. And so, so yeah, he pivoted, he knew just when to pivot to that. And that's that social calibration. He pivoted to, um, Hey, let's do this. And he didn't say he noticed how he didn't qualify himself. He just told her what to do. Right. He said, Hey, why don't we do a video chat and get right. So it was, it wasn't like, so we, so you can feel more comfortable or, you know, he didn't say all that. He just said, why don't, why don't we do a video or an audio chat? Let's talk for a few minutes and then maybe set up logistics. Perfect. Right. Because she knows, okay, I have this conversation with this guy and I don't like it. I can tell him, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not comfortable or whatever. Right. So it gave her an intermediate step between faceless guy, other than photos and messages and meeting up in person and probably having sex with them. She, she, you bridge the gap between the two with that. And so he did it in exactly the right calibrated way. All right. So it worked out perfect for him. So those are two examples you can see in the one, the one was a disaster, but many of you guys listening to me have had those circumstances where just <laughs> you were a disaster, right? Some of you are having that now and I get it. Um, it happens and it's not a statement of value for you as a man. Doesn't mean that you're not worth the crap or anything as a guy. It just means that, Hey, you know, you're just not so socially calibrated enough yet. You're not good enough at text game yet. You're not good enough at, you know, gaming a girl yet in communication with with a woman yet and so that means we just need to improve that so hopefully this example will help you i want to add so you guys listening made it to the end go ahead and send me your exchanges if you're on dating apps or texting women or trying to do closes feel free to send me send screenshots over in an email and i will i will go through them i will of course conceal your identity and conceal the girl's identity but I'll go through them on a video just like this one and I can help pick it apart and tell you what you did good, what you could do differently, right? If they're bad examples, send them and I can help help you with that. If they're good examples, success stories where you just like killed it and closed, send those too for the benefit of the other men that watch this channel. We can share that and talk about what went right. So if you guys have texting exchanges with women that went good, bad, or indifferent, feel free to send them over to my email. My email address is in the link in the description. Okay. Thanks again for making it to the end of the video. And hopefully this was valuable to you. Uh, again, hit that like button and share it. Take care. Mm -hmm.